Hey everybody, it is Brooke with The Buttered Home and tonight we have a very special video for you. We're kind of doing things backwards. So we released this recipe earlier this week and we are sharing the video on how to make it after. <laughs> So I don't know what that says about 2022, but we're gonna go with it. So this week, our recipe is for skillet flatbread. Back in 2018, this is one of the very first ones that we shared because this is so easy. I mean, I hate to even really call it a recipe. But I've done a couple of things in advance first so that we can kind of move the video along. I've gotten my mixer ready, and I'm gonna to talk to you about how to use your mixer as an easy way to knead your bread, but we'll get to that in a minute. Here I have a cup of hot tap water. Um, you don't have to have it boiling, it just needs to be very, very hot. You don't even really have to heat it up in the microwave um, because you don't want it boiling. If you get your water too hot, then you'll kill your yeast. So to the one cup of water, I have two teaspoons of dry active yeast and I've let it, I mixed it in and I've let it sit just for about five to seven minutes and it started to bloom. Now, if you're not comfortable using yeast, this is a good recipe to do it with because it only has one rise. But blooming yeast is simply just looking in and making sure that you have bubbles, which we do. And in just a minute, I'm gonna show you how to to see that whenever we go overhead. So we're gonna mix all this together, but first I have three cups of plain flour, and to that I'm going to add two teaspoons of sea salt. I like the coarse sea salt because it adds a little texture, um, and it's good to have in recipes when you're baking like this. And I don't really consider this baking because we do everything in the skillet. So we just mix that salt into our flour to get it ready. And you can do this and let your yeast bloom all you want. And then I have my mixer here and we're going to put everything together. So I'm going to swap overhead so that you can see what the bloomed yeast looks like and watch as we bring this dough together. Okay, so we have our mixer ready and you'll notice that I don't have my attachment in here, but I do have the flour and uh, salt ready and I just wanted to move this over so you could see the little bubbles on the top and where it looks like it's kind of thick. And I'll hold it up so you can get a better look at it. That means that we've bloomed and your yeast has, uh, is ready to use. Um, it's real important that you don't put too much hot, or you don't use too hot a water in there because you don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to kill your yeast. So we are going to, in our stand mixer, put our flour and salt mixture. And I'm trying to get the camera where you could see everything, but I'm going to take this off because it's easier to dump it in here. And then we're going to pour in our yeast. And you'll notice whenever you pour it in that everything kind of separated. And then to that, we're gonna add about a tablespoon of olive oil. And I like to just, with my whisk, get it started mixing up. Or you can do it with your attachment for your stand mixer. That's fine too. And at, in the beginning, I use my paddle and it's gonna get loud here for just a second, but I'm gonna just show you how it comes together really quick. All right, just that fast, you'll notice that all that flour has pulled away from the sides and you're left with kind of like a dough ball. And I'm gonna get my fingers nasty and get this excess off of the paddle. Make a big loud noise and set that to the side. Now, 
you can at this point do a manual um, kneading which is great I love to manually knead bread I, even though it's five to seven minutes um, it's very peaceful it's relaxing but if you're in a hurry and you need to get these done rather quickly uh, you can use your dough hook and this is a standard attachment with most stand mixers if not uh, then you're going to have to do the hand knead process but this really really makes your life a lot easier so we'll simply turn this on uh, a low to medium setting i have a little bench flour here just to the side so if you're hand kneading this or if you're using the machine there is a chance that you will need just a sprinkle of this here and there to kind of bring it together so i am going to start the kneading process here and in five to seven minutes, I'll be back to show you what our smooth, supple dough ball for this skillet flatbread looks like. So hang tight with me. Okay, we are back and it has finished about a five minute time of kneading. And one of the ways that I can tell that we are ready is when it gets sort of this really smooth finish to it. Uh, so I'm just gonna flour my hands just a little bit to kind of get that excess off of that dough hook and see it comes off rather clean. And then I'm going to take it out of the bowl and it might be just a tad sticky. And if it is, that's, that's more than okay. Uh, one of the reasons why I like this flatbread is it has like a really quick rise time so i'm just going to flour it just a tad to where it's not quite so sticky but you have this soft supple elastic dough that you're left with so we just want to form it into a ball and then i'm going to spray a large bowl with just some olive oil spray if you don't have olive oil spray you can use regular cooking spray or you can just put a little olive oil in the bottom then we're going to set our dough in there and then we're going to loosely cover it with a tea towel and place it in a warm spot. This will need to sit still until it's doubled in size. Okay, so you've got probably what looks like two handfuls of dough. So ideally you want that to expand into four handfuls of dough. Um, which for me in my kitchen usually takes about an hour, but we'll be back and we'll check it and then we'll show you what to do with it after because after this rise we will be ready to cook. So we'll be right back with you. So don't go away. Okay, we are back. We have finished a one hour rise time and I want to show you how beautiful my dough is. Now you'll notice that it has doubled in size. So we are going to take just a little bit of our bench flour and I always keep some on my fingers and just roll it out. And I like to punch it down just like that. Just, I just do a real simple pat. And then I will cut it into four equal parts. And then I will simply split those in half. This recipe, like all of our others, is very easy to double or half. Uh, as written, it makes eight of these little guys. So I'm gonna just throw them in a pile over here to the side. Meanwhile, I have my skillet on medium to low heat, just heating up just a little bit. Now there is no wrong way to do this, okay? I like to just take them and roll them into a little ball, just like so. Put them on just a lightly floured surface. Take my rolling pin and just roll them out into pretty little circles. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. If you want them crispy and thin, then of course you're gonna roll them really, really thin to do that. 
I like to use these flatbreads more like a pita, okay? So I tend to roll mine just a little bit thinner than you might like them, and that's okay. I would suggest making the recipe and trying some both ways. But either way, you might never buy pita bread or flatbreads again. And these just make just a small, just a small flatbread. So I'm gonna take my spray and just grease my skillet just a little bit. And then we're gonna put it down in there. I like mine a little thicker because I like for them to bubble up real good and turn into this pillowy soft goodness. And after just a few minutes, we should start to see it start to bubble up. It's a beautiful, wonderful thing. Let me make sure I've got everything on. And you want to do this at medium to low heat. So we're just gonna leave it here for just about, and I've just got my heat set more on medium than I do low, for just about 30 seconds or so. And while this one is starting to cook just a little, I'm gonna go ahead and roll this one up and roll it out. And we'll do one kind of thick, and that's this one, and I'll do another one a little thinner so you can see the difference. But I love this flatbread because it's one easy rise. And even if you're like me and you work for a living, you can get home at night, you can buy a rotisserie chicken or something like that, shred it up. In my case tonight, I have cooked two really big chicken breasts in my Instant Pot. And we're gonna stuff these with some nice arugula lettuce, a little bit of Greek season, it, uh, Greek or Italian dressing, and cut these and stuff these with that chicken, that shredded chicken. And oh my gosh, it's so good. It's like sandwich times 10. <laughs> now, if you wanted to make the recipe of eight like we've done tonight, this dough will keep in an airtight container for about a week. So you could totally make just a couple and then come back and have some for later. So that's always a really, really good option too. Or you can half the recipe and just make four. Or if you're feeding a big crowd, you can double it and make 16. So I've rolled this one out a lot thinner and you'll start to see the bubbles start to form here. And when that happens, I just take it and I flip it. <clears throat> Now we're gonna let this other side cook for just about a minute or so. And I think I have room. Let me see if I have room. No, I don't have room. So I'm gonna cook two for you. I'm gonna cook the thicker one and then I'll cook the thinner one. And that way you can see the difference in both. So let me move this guy back to the middle. But you see how quick they start to brown. And y'all, these are fantastic. They also will keep in an, a Ziploc bag or an airtight container for about a week after you cook them. Or you can wrap them up in some plastic wrap and freeze them and take them out as needed for later. So I'm gonna flop top, just turn it over and check it. And then we're gonna let it brown just a little bit more. And I have turned my heat down just a little because we're starting to smoke and I don't want to set the fire alarm off. I'm famous for doing that. <laughs> Not fire alarm, smoke alarm. <laughs> but these cook up so nice and just so quick. All right, that one's good and brown, so I'm going to set him to the side. And I think we're good on our oil, so I'm going to take this thinner one and it will actually cook up just a little faster. I'm using a cast iron skillet, but you certainly don't have to. Um, once the cast iron skillet heats up 
and gets that heat evenly distributed, it really doesn't take long at all. So see, in less than about 15 seconds, we're starting to get those nice little bubbles here. So I'm gonna turn this one, number one, our skillet is hotter, and number two, <laughs> this one's a lot thinner. So after about 30 seconds or so, you can flip it over and you can feel and it's cooked all the way. Now this one's a little cool to the touch now, so I'm gonna tear it open and let you see the inside. Another good option is you can take it and you can cut them open and then take a knife and slit them and stuff them. They are fantastic. Or if you just wanted to use these like non-dippers and dip them in your favorite dip too, that's also a really good option. These are fun, they're easy to make, and they are oh so good. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and we're gonna talk just a minute or more. Uh, so just stick with me, okay? Okay, everybody, we are back. We have finished our beautiful skillet flatbread. Y'all, this is eight, well, it's seven because we ate one of them. So this is beautiful, bubbly, and it's hot. You can cut it, split it, cut a pocket in it, eat it like a pita, or you can simply fold it up and eat it like a soft taco. There is just no limit to what you can do with this. I have got some fresh greens, some sliced tomatoes, and some red onion. I cooked some uh, chicken breast in my Instant Pot, and we have shredded that, and we're gonna stuff these with all this glorious, glorious food. I've even got a lime so that we can split it up and squeeze it over and have just a little bit of flatbread heaven tonight for our supper. This is the easiest flatbread you'll ever make. One rise, five ingredients. Simple, easy, and I hope that I've shown you that tonight. As usual, this recipe, like all of our others, can be found at thebutteredhome.com. We would appreciate to have you over there and visit and take a look around. It helps us continue to be able to bring you quality content like this. Also, if you're not already, make sure that you're following us on all of our social channels because sometimes we do videos like this in reverse order and you won't get them unless you're signed up to all of our social channels because we like to, we like to, you just never know what we're gonna do here at The Buttered Home. And as usual, if you're not already, be sure that you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and ding the bell so that you can be notified when we drop new videos like this one. Y'all, I'm hungry. I don't like to eat on camera. I've had several comments lately about, I don't trust a cook who doesn't eat their own cooking. Y'all, my mama told me not to talk with my mouth full, so I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> we hope y'all have a wonderful week and be here next week as we will have a dessert. So we go from bread to dessert. Uh, and I promise you we'll have something a little healthier for you later in the month. So from the buttered home to your home, we love you guys. Bye.